What's up guys, my name is Matt Wren. I'm a first year medical student at Wake Forest School of Medicine. I attended the University of Virginia for undergrad where I majored in neuroscience. And before coming to med school, I actually worked as a data scientist for two years uh, for a management consulting firm. So I'm gonna show you a day in my life as it is right now. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Good morning guys, so I just woke up, it's about 6.15 and the first thing I do when I wake up is check my email, so I'm about to do that. Then I'm gonna eat breakfast and then we're gonna head to lecture. And typically I don't go to lecture uh, just because I'm not really a morning person, but I felt like going today. So we're gonna go to lecture, come back, eat again, uh, go to clinical skills at the hospital and then we'll come back and probably do some work and study. And then uh, hopefully we'll have time to work out. So that's pretty much the plan for today. It's just gonna be a lot of studying. So um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the day. And yeah, let's do it. How's it going guys? So we just got back from lecture and ate again. So now we gotta go to clinical skills, which uh, it's a mandatory class that meets once per week and focuses on professional development. So we do have to dress up for this and they expect us to wear business casual. So I'll just show you guys what I'm wearing right now. Pretty standard work outfit. Um, and just in case you guys are curious, I got my shirt, tie, and dress pants from Hugo Boss. My watch is Movado. Have an Allen Edmonds belt and the shoes are to boot New York. So especially for you guys out there, if you don't have dress clothes yet, get them. Uh, it's gonna be a good investment. You're gonna end up using them for either job interviews, med school interviews, or just working on jobs. So uh, my main recommendations are just to make sure the clothes fit well and that you feel good in them. So you don't have to drop a lot of money, but uh, those are the two main criteria that I'll focus on. So uh, let's go to class and then we'll see you guys in a little bit and hopefully we'll have time to hit the gym. What's up guys? So we just got done with class and volunteering and uh, we went back home and ate and did a little bit of studying. So now we're on our way to the gym. And uh, I'll give you guys some advice before we head out to go there. And so the guidance I'm about to give you is probably gonna sound kind of cheesy or cliche, but uh, pretty much my advice is just to make sure you do things you love. And uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because I didn't do that. Um, at least at the beginning of my undergrad career. So I went into college basically just with the attitude of I'm just gonna do whatever it takes to become a doctor. And so, you know, you'll read online, you know, what do I have to do to become a doctor? And they'll tell you, you know, you gotta volunteer at the hospital, you gotta do research, get good grades, get a good MCAT score. And so um, that stuff's true for the most part, but it's also not the best approach to just go down those things like a, like a checklist. And so what I'd recommend doing, if you haven't already, you know, no matter where you are in the process, is just make sure you find something that you love doing. Uh, if you're research focused and that's, that's what you love doing, find an awesome research project that really excites you, um, that's led by a PI that you really look up to and has qualities that you wanna embody someday and you know, pretty much just make sure that you're absorbing something that's gonna help you in the future. And so when I first started volunteering, I just took the first gig that I got at a hospital. And uh, what did I do? I was filing papers. And so uh, while that does actually make a difference in the operational efficiency of the hospital and ultimately improves the quality of care that's provided, it wasn't really necessarily rewarding to me because I didn't really get to see that impact firsthand. And so I'd much rather been talking to patients or, you know, doing something that's a lot more, uh, a lot more interactive, at least interpersonally speaking. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the general gist. I mean, I did eventually find a volunteering opportunity that I loved. Um, so my passions basically just eating and physical activity so 
I volunteered at a, uh, a food assistance center that provided groceries to underprivileged families. Um, and I was also a physical activity counselor. So I basically just got to share my passions with these families in need and that was awesome. And time flew by in that. Um, and I talked a lot, a lot about it in my interviews and secondary applications and everything. And so I didn't even put down the volunteering opportunity that I had uh, when I first entered college that I was filing papers for because uh, basically just because I didn't really have much to speak about. So, um, you know, I think that that same principle applies if you're doing research. If you're showing up to lab every day and you don't really feel like, uh, you know, you're able to talk about it, then I would suggest getting out of that project and finding something that's a better fit. And so, um, bottom line, do things that you love. You can never go wrong with that and you'll never regret doing things that you enjoy. So, whether or not a medical career is something that you ultimately pursue, um, volunteering, research experience, these things are all valuable um, to take with you moving forward. Anyways, guys, that's my advice. Uh, I know it's it's very generic and it's no secret, but uh, it is something that is very important and uh, something I think that you guys should not lose sight of. So anyways, we're about to head to the gym. So let's go uh, work out and I'll see y'all when we get in there. All right, so we made it to the gym and today we're gonna be doing legs. So before lifting weights, I always start with cardio. I try to switch it up because it can get pretty repetitive after a while. So I pretty much just do whatever piece of equipment I feel like doing that day. And today I felt like doing the stair step, the, the stair master. So doing the stair master, taking it one step at a time in the beginning just to get moving. And you'll notice that now I'm starting to turn up the speed and skip steps. And so the reason for that is to warm up the entire leg and parts of the lower back. And so I'll do this for anywhere between five to 10 minutes, pretty much just until I'm ready to start my workout. And after this pre-workout cardio, we'll get into the weights. So like I said before, we're gonna be focused on, on the lower body and specifically the hamstrings today. All right, so the first exercise we're doing today is the back squat. You'll notice that most of the movements we're doing today are big compound movements. So a lot of squats, uh, lunges, and a deadlift movement. So the reason for that is, is that it pretty much the big compound movements are gonna give you the best bang for your buck for your time. So squats and deadlifts, lunges, presses, if you're doing upper body, um, pretty much anything that just engages multiple parts of the body at once, those are the things that are going to make your workouts most efficient and productive. So that's my ultimate goal is just to get in and get out in as little time as possible. So I try to cut down on rest time by doing single leg variations as we were doing before with the lunges, here with the Bulgarian squats, and then here again with the one-legged leg press. And so basically just switch things up, see what you like, see what, work, what works for you. I find that my body responds better to focusing on one leg at a time versus doing both at once, but everyone's body is different. So I follow the same one-legged concept here with the straight-legged deadlifts, uh, with the cables, and this will be the last main exercise, at least the last core compound exercise of today's workout. And then we'll finish it up with two machine movements. So this is gonna be the start of the auxiliary work. This is, these next two exercises are essentially the two things that you'd want to eliminate if you were in a time crunch and had to cut out any part of this workout. But since we had time today, we're doing the hamstring curl machine here bringing it up with both legs, then alternating each leg we bring it down with. And the last exercise uh, that we'll do as far as resistance training goes is this glute machine. So this is a great exercise for both the glutes and the quadriceps. So I typically try to start with cardio to warm up and then end with cardio to cool down. So today I felt like playing a little bit of basketball because it's been a while. So this was just kind of a fun way to unwind from the day, de-stress, and uh, cool down a little bit. So that's it guys for the workout and we'll see you back home. Just got back from the gym and my food's cooking right now so I have a minute to give you guys some study tips. So 
let's just break it down between undergrad and med school. So undergrad, I think it really just depends on the subject that you're taking. So every discipline is gonna require kind of a different way of thinking and therefore I think it requires a different way of learning. At least that's the way it was for me. So let's just start with physics. So physics is super quantitative. I barely read any of the chapters in the textbooks. I just mainly focus all my time and efforts on practice problems. So. What I would do if I were you is just Google hardest physics problems for rotational kinematics or whatever topic you're covering right now uh, with solutions and then study the way they uh, solve all of those difficult problems and try to find as many exceptions as possible. So try to find the weird problems that you essentially wish weren't on the test because they probably will show up. And so that's the way I did it at first and then I would go back and read any part that I didn't quite understand and really just use it as a reference. So same was sort of went for Orgo, um, especially the second semester, which is much more synthesis heavy. Um, I think that doing as many practice problems as possible will expose you to as many different situations as possible. And so you'll start to recognize certain patterns and essentially just learn tricks for getting from certain starting materials to certain end products. And you'll start to learn the exceptions and it'll just help you from a conceptual standpoint as well. So that's what I did for Orgo, practice problems, and I did a little bit more reading in Orgo than I did for physics. Bio was actually, I thought was the hardest. I thought, and this was just for me personally, but um, that was the subject that I felt like I spent the most time trying to learn. And so what I did is I just read through all the chapters and just took notes basically pretty plain Jane, boring way of going about things, but just read the chapters, took notes, tried to make charts, and sometimes I would look up videos online. Sometimes that helped to like visualize something in motion rather than just trying to put a bunch of like static pieces together and understand like the story of how things um, kind of piece together. For Orgo Lab, you should check out this awesome resource on Amazon. It's an ebook called Organic Chemistry Lab Techniques Explained in Layman's Terms. And it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. So uh, when I worked as a TA, I found that a lot of my students learned best and were most receptive to very simple explanations that used plain language. And so this was an approach that, because I found it so effective with a lot of students, it was something that I wanted to make accessible to everybody. So you can find it on Amazon, check it out, let me know what you guys think, and if there's anything that I can improve upon, or if you guys have any questions or feedback, um, please let me know. So you can find my email inside the ebook, and I'll be as responsive as possible. That's it for undergrad, for med school. I kind of just started, so we started with uh, anatomy, and I think that the best way to learn for any memorization heavy topic is to just quiz yourself. So just quiz yourself over, over, and over again. And uh, every time you get things wrong, you start to, that's when you really start to learn and start to uh, pick up the yield. So anyways, I gotta get back to cooking and I hope that helps though with the study tips and uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit after this meal. All right guys, so we just finished eating and now I'm just doing a little bit of reading for a discussion that we're gonna have tomorrow on clinical ethics, so this is pretty much what I'm going to be working on for the next 25 or 30 minutes or basically just however long it takes me and then I'm just going to study a little bit after that so that's what we're going to be doing for the next hour or so. Alright guys well that's pretty much a wrap for today. Um, about to go to bed here in a second and you know typically I try to stay away from my computer and my phone uh, right before I go to bed just to stay away from the light and uh, you know I've been reading this book recently um, which is teaching um, doctors and medical students how to make wise financial decisions. So anyways, I just wanted to thank Dr. Webb for having me do this day in the life. Um, and I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. So um, thanks again, and I uh, wish you all the best of luck.